and welcome to this episode of the Cornette New York Big Apples Core podcast. On this episode, we will be hearing from Marilyn Joyner from her workplace, um, and I will be interviewing her. My I name is Courtney Grill, um, and I'm a business development director at Skanska USA Building. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Courtney. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for uh, coming on the podcast. Um, so you're the founder and CEO of Her Workplace. Um, please tell us about what Her Workplace is and what it provides and how you got started. Yeah, of course. Um, so Her Workplace is a career network that is focused on the next generation of women and non-binary leaders. We offer both in-person and virtual experiences to our membership community really designed to foster relationship building, storytelling, personal and professional development, and knowledge sharing. We launched the community um, last October, so we're still fairly new coming up on our first year being an active business. And we are headquartered in New York City. We have, again, both in-person and virtual opportunities for collaboration and networking for all of our members. And we are growing our platform both virtually. Um, we're about to roll out the second phase of our tech platform, which I can go into more details about what's included in that. And then we're also launching in four new cities across the U.S. over the next two months. So bringing our in-person community places and all of our in-person events and programming to our members in other major cities. Um, so that's kind of a brief overview of who we are and um, when we got started and the exciting opportunities that we have coming up. That's so exciting. Uh, what what cities do you have plans for growth in? Yeah, so we're expanding in Los Angeles and San Francisco over the next two weeks. And then in October, we're expanding to Boston and Chicago. That's so exciting. So much going on, so much activity in such a short amount of time. Yeah, I know everyone says, or everyone has been telling me, Marilyn, you've done so much in such a short amount of time. And when you're a startup founder, you kind of lose sight of everything that is going on because you're trying to move so quickly and, and grow and scale at such a fast pace. So it's been really um, incredible connecting with various people, um, potential investors, potential members that give me that feedback because it brings me back to our mission and really why I created this community and why it is that we're growing at such a fast pace. That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure once you're, you start, start on something, you just keep going onto the next item, onto the next thing. Um, that's very exciting. Thank you. Uh, how did you originally get your start in the corporate real estate industry? Um, and how, what made you decide to start Her Workplace? Yeah. Yeah. So as you know, I have spent over 12 plus years in commercial real estate brokerage working for top firms, JLL, CBRE. Um, and I got into the industry, kind of fell into it, to be honest. My family is in the real estate industry, kind of grew up on the residential side um, my mother has her own firm outside of Atlanta. And though there are major differences between residential and commercial, um, there are a lot of similarities of just the way that you do business and kind of what the industry as a whole looks like. Um, so I thought I wanted to go into politics. Um, I wanted to run for office coming out of college and kind of quickly realized that that wasn't necessarily the path that I wanted to go down. Um, but I did want to have a really big impact on my community and, you know, wanted to have a robust 
career, especially one that was in a male dominated space. Um, so I had the opportunity to just get started in commercial real estate, immediately jumped into brokerage, um, got exposure to several different markets and deal types, and then ended up um, kind of really finding my footing in office leasing across major markets. Um, and the last firm that I was with was CBRE in New York City, um, primarily focused on tenant rep. I've always loved commercial real estate brokerage. I think the one thing that I found really challenging with it, though, is being a woman in a male-dominated industry that is not as forward-thinking when it comes to diversity in brokerage specifically. So I, as a young woman in my career, trying to advance into a leadership position, really struggled. And I specifically struggled with finding resources, um, mentors, sponsors, both inside and outside of my organization. And I felt like there was a huge gap of you know, having women who are at the top of the industry and then those that are very junior level, there just wasn't as many women that were in that mid-level tier of becoming the future leaders. So I saw a problem within my own industry of how are we advancing and focusing on our next generation of leaders especially those that are women and non-binary professionals and how are organizations like, you know, the company that I was with tackling these issues that are very heavily male focused and dominated. Um, so that was, you know, my own pain point and experience that kind of led me to wanting to create something that focused on this next generation. And then at the same time, I struggled myself of finding inclusive career networks that were focused on women, that were inexpensive, easily accessible, had both a virtual tech component and in-person experiences. And one that really brought those together from different experiences, backgrounds, cultures, industries to further collaborate and support one another. I felt like there was nothing out there, to be honest. Um, so in summary, it really was a combination of my own experiences in corporate and really struggling as a woman to advance in my career with this need of wanting to build my own network and f finding an inclusive community that could really support my career growth. I love that you um, weren't able to find it, so you decided to build it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, awesome. I never saw myself being an entrepreneur. Um, you know, brokerage in some way is entrepreneurship. You are developing your own business. Um you know, you are setting career goals and milestones for advancing your business. And that all leads to, you know, how you advance in your career overall, plus the revenue you're generating yourself. So there are a lot of elements of entrepreneurship um, that I think me having that experience in brokerage kind of set me up to be able to do what I'm doing now. And I also had the opportunity to go to business school um, at Columbia Business School and London Business School. It was a combination program. And that really opened my eyes to not only other opportunities and career paths that I could take, but it got my feet wet in entrepreneurship, what it looks like, what it's like building a startup, how to grow and foster a team and everything that you need to do to kind of get started. So that opportunity gave me that push to pursue it. That's exciting. Um, I'm sure. Yes. It's very much like wearing very many hats at once, mm -hmm. especially at the beginning, but, um, 
That's exciting, especially um, dovetailing those past experiences into um, this new startup uh, company for you. Yes, absolutely. I wear many hats <laughs> and um, there's no job that is too small. And I, I would say that's the biggest lesson I've learned is it's so important for founders to to experience every single piece and every single like job of their business. You, um, you mentioned the, um, entrepreneurial kind of aspect of brokerage and kind of owning your own team and, um, kind of working for, um, ultimately working for yourself within a larger organization. Mm -hmm. Um, did any of those specific brokerage aspects, um, come to help you as you were starting up, um, her workplace? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would say, I mean, from the get go of first day on the job as a tenant rep broker, you've got to build a book of business, whether you're working for a team, an individual, I mean, at the end of the day, your business and your revenue is all reliant on the output that you're putting into it. Like, I think that some brokers go into it thinking, you know, oh, I'll, I'll just kind of ride the coattails of whoever it is I'm working with. And like, that will be my stability of business throughout my career. That's not the case. Um, I always have said that from the beginning, it's so important to really have this mindset of, you know, I've got to build my book and that's how I'm, I'm going to build a growing and sustainable business throughout my career. Um, so I would say it was even the littlest things of like developing a business plan, um, developing a sales process of like, you know, when you're a tenant rep broker, you're selling to potential companies who could be your clients. And so coming up with a really robust process that works for you of generating new business. Um, I was taught that from the very beginning with one of the first um, brokers that I worked with at JLL, who I very much admire. Um, and so it was those tools that really set me up for where I am today of, you know, we're a membership community. We're bringing on new members on a daily basis. We're doing a lot of prospecting of, you know, finding potential members. And that's a lot of the similar work that I did throughout my brokerage career. Um, you also mentioned uh, that you prior the in um, corporate real estate um, while being a broker, there was a uh, lack of mentorship, especially for uh, women or um, inclusive mentorship at that. Um, ha have you had any mentors that have had um, a great impact on your career and your life this far? Um, yes, absolutely. And, and I would say that, um, you know, throughout my real estate career, yes, I have developed those mentor relationships along the way. I think where I really struggled was the amount of support that I really needed. Um, like I had a great mentor when I worked with JLL. I developed a really um, strong relationship with a mentor and now advisor of her workplace at CBRE. So yes, I have developed those relationships, but Throughout my career, I always wish that I had more and that there was just overall more support. Um, and, you know, a mentor and a sponsor are completely different things. And, and I've had both. And I do believe that everyone should have both. You know, mentors you go to for advice. Sponsors are the ones that, you know, say your name in a room that you're not in. Um, and I would say that it was the sponsors that I struggled with more of really finding those people that I could trust and that would, you know, put me up for opportunities and that would really advocate for me 
both inside and outside of the organization and industry. Um, and I think that's where this industry in particular is really lagging. Um, it's sponsorship opportunities for professionals that are future leaders, specifically women and non-binary um, people. I love that. I love that um, you describe sponsorship as saying somebody who can say your name in a room that you aren't in. Yes. Um, how does her workplace kind of help fill that void of mentorship and sponsorship um, with women, especially if they're across all different industries? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, like you said, our, our membership, we're not founder focused. We're not corporate focused. We really are a mix and um, have women and non-binary professionals from all different backgrounds, industries, and experiences, primarily Gen Z and millennials. So those that are advancing in their careers um, through our membership platform, we offer a variety of different uh, resources and opportunities. And one of those is our mentor platform, which is pretty incredible. It's something that we launched earlier this year. Um, we have about 26 mentors, and these are primarily women that are in very senior level positions, C-level executives that offer their time once a month virtually for 45 minutes to connect with our members. Um, so a member can sign up for a mentor session with a specific person and that person's profile describes, you know, who they are, who they work with or what organization they run and the different types of topics that they're focused on, such as like resume building or navigating the financial industry as a woman um, and our members can book time with them. And the sessions are small group sessions with up to five members. Um, so it gives the member the chance to not only build a relationship with the mentor, but also build a relationship and really connect with other members that are on the call. Um, some of the executives that we have are the CEO of Urban Stems is one of our mentors. Um, the COO of Expensify is one of our mentors. Um, and we're bringing on more C-level executives on a daily basis. And, you know, I think one thing that I was surprised by with this platform is just how many women at that level really want to be able to give back. Um, I mean, I, I have known that senior level women want to help for the majority of them. Um, but it's been really eye opening as to how willing they've been to give their time and how impactful these sessions are. Um, and I am one of the mentors. So I've sit on the other side of the table of really experiencing it for myself. And it's just incredible, you know, after each of these sessions, what both the mentees and the mentors walk away with. That's amazing. Um, that's quite a resource. Yeah. Has it been um, difficult to attract um, members and mentors um, and retain them? Um, what have your marketing efforts looked like? Yeah. So I, so we originally, when we um, launched in October, we had a physical um, community space in New York City that we were testing. Um, you know, I came from this world of commercial real estate and I had this vision of not only building this membership community focused on women, but also having a really robust in-person platform. So what that meant was having in-person spaces that people could go to, to either work, meet or network. And then at the same time, having in-person events, discussions, roundtables, networking opportunities that just overall brought together our members in that type of environment. As we all have been craving so much more in person since coming out of the pandemic. So yeah, we had this opportunity to take over 
the former um, wing space in Bryant Park. And it really was a test for us to see, should we have our own space or should we find another solution to lower operational costs and not put ourselves in this bucket of being, quote unquote, um, a co-working space? So we tested it. And we were at the space for about six months and quickly realized that there's just so much more to what we offer with our platform, our mentorship, our um, networking groups that we've created, the AI technology that we're integrating into our platform to better connect our members and all of the events and opportunities that we provide that the space aspect was really something that was more on the back burner of being a perk to membership rather than at the forefront. Um, so we quickly pivoted um, this past May and ended up moving out of that space, developed a really strong relationship with Tishman Spire, which I had had those relationships from being in brokerage. And now we have partnered with them to um, utilize their uh, studio by Tishman spaces, which are their communal workspaces, um, to where our members now have access to go to those spaces. We do a lot of our events there. Um, so overall, I would say, you know, being a startup founder, you're constantly pivoting, testing, learning, failing, winning, you know, you're going through this hamster wheel of trying new things, testing things out, seeing what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, going through this pivot really opened my eyes to coming back to what's our mission? What's our vision? Why did I start this community? And really honing in on building the community rather than trying to be a player in this co-working world. Um, so our the way that we've messaged ourselves, the way that we're marketing ourselves and all of the aspects that we've been putting into our platform, you know, that's been something that we've been um, navigating the past several months, but it's really brought us to who we are and um, what it is that is our core offering as being a member of our workplace. I love that, that you've kind of tried things, pivoted, see, see what works, uh, what doesn't. Um, that yeah. sounds like the, the true entrepreneurial spirit there. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it, is, it is so hard, I will say, of just being a founder because, you know, you're constantly faced with failure and that's okay because you know, in my opinion, failure is a really good thing um, because it, it leads you down a path that brings you to success. Um, and so, I, w I mean, I hate that word just in general, but, but um, our pivot this past May was really challenging. And it, it was something that, yes, I had thoughts of, should we keep going? Like, is this business successful? Like, what are we going to do next? Um, but, you know, doors kind of opened when this other door closed. And we're now in such a better place of growth and opportunity. And I'm just excited to kind of see what lies ahead. Um, I love that you said that being faced with failure brings you to a path of success. Um, so many people find failure to be kind of scary. Yeah. Is there something that helped you to kind of embrace, um, embrace it more so or find it less scary? Yeah, I mean, I think what really help, has helped me is trying not to dwell on it. Um, you know, especially in the startup world or if you're in an industry that is very fast paced or you just want to like get things moving quickly. Um, you have to keep your eyes on what lies ahead of you. You can't look back. And that's what really pulled me through um, and helped me pull my team through 
when we were going through this challenge um, because we had to come up with a solution and we knew that we didn't want to shut down the business. Like we're still fairly new. We knew we were doing a lot of things right and that we had something really special here. Um, And what happened was when we moved out of that space and, you know, developed this incredible relationship with Tishman, it opened doors for us to expand nationally. So like we wouldn't be where we are today if we didn't have that opportunity. So I think just overall having that mindset of, you know, when one door opens, other doors do, when one door closes, other doors do open and really focusing on what are those other doors and how can I have a positive mindset throughout this process. I love that. The positive mindset Um, and keeping your eyes on what lies ahead. Yes. Um, I think that's so appropriate in just all of business. Um, if you're an entrepreneur or even if you're in corporate, yeah, Um, that's great. Um, Along those lines, um, where do you see her workplace uh, being successful where other similar models have struggled? Um, Have you learned any lessons from them um, that you've been able to incorporate into um, her workplace? Yeah, I think it's a few things. Um, There's a critical gap of career networks that are focused on primarily Gen Z and millennial women. And helping them to collaborate, support one another, while also supporting their professional and personal development. There's really nothing out there um, that is as robust as the platform that we've built. And what I mean by that is having both this virtual and in-person component. um, On the virtual side, technology is everything. And, you know, with some of our comparable organizations, um, I think there's a huge lack in leaning into technology. Um, We do have a tech platform. We are integrating AI into our platform to better connect our members to each other, to our events, to our experiences and to opportunities. Um, and I think that's where we're really going to be able to speed ahead of some of these other networks that are a little bit more archaic in the platforms that they've built and the way that they've thought about how do you best connect those within your community, within your community and what is the value add there? Um, so it's the virtual piece as well as this in-person experience. Um, you know, there are a significant amount of people that don't necessarily have a place to go. Um, you know, they're working from home or they're working hybrid or they're popping into the office every now and then, or they're, they may be going to an office, but they don't have like a third place that they can go to where they feel welcomed and included and they feel like they can be their authentic self. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a physical place, but just an environment that, you know, people can have that experience. And so that's what we've really doubled down on with not only our community places where our members can go and meet and network and be in person with each other, but the way that we've developed our in-person events and our experiences, really honing in on ensuring that every member is seen, heard, and valued. And that's the way that we run our in-person programming is with that focus in mind. Um, And then there's other things like accessibility. You know, the tech really plays into that of how accessible is the platform, how accessible are all of the elements that you're providing, the mentors, the networking groups, the resources, the job board, um, pricing. You know, we, we're focused on a demographic that's growing in their careers. So we've been really conscious with not having really high-end pricing, having pricing that is inclusive. Um, 
And then overall, you know, being a diverse community, being welcoming, being inclusive, not having these like heavy barrier to entry, which we've seen with some other career networks um, focused on women that have kind of come and gone or still exist. So I would say those are like the pieces that we're really leaning into. And, you know, those are the areas that are differentiating us. That's great. That's awesome. Um, I mean, you started your career kind of mostly in the in the built environment space with in bro- commercial brokerage. Yes. Um, and a lot of the Cornet, a lot of most of the Cornet members um, are also focused on the built environment um, in some element, um, even if it's providing solutions for the built environment. Uh Um, Has it been, uh, how has the transition been from um, going from built environment to building essentially a technology platform? Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you have the in-person events as well, but um, I mean, you ultimately created a technology platform to support this business, Mm -hmm. um, which is pretty awesome. How has that transition been? I mean, I'm not going to lie when I say it's been challenging because I'm not a tech person. (laughs) Um, So I've had to really rely heavily on um, the product developers and designers that we've brought on. And um, I personally have had to learn so much in such a short period of time. Um, But what has been great is just having that support system because you know, at the, from the very beginning, I've had all of these ideas and this vision of what this could be. And so to bringing on the right people that can help execute that has been incredible. And, you know, I would say that as a founder, like you ultimately, when you're, you know, bringing on people to hire or you're finding contractors or you're just finding people that can support and help you grow the platform and the business of whatever you're building, it's so important to get people who are better than you. Um, Put your ego aside and really find those people that, you know, know so much more than you and the certain areas that you may be weaker in. Um, And technology is one that I'm definitely weaker in. Um, And I think too, just overall, you know, there has been still a lot of, similarities and integration with what I have built and what we're building and the way that I've run the organization um, with my past in this like built world of commercial real estate. Um, Just because, you know, like I said, there's just been a lot of synergies of like building your own book of business, running a sales process, um, managing people, like managing a team. Um, and you know, it's been a really eye opening experience, although a big transition. Um, but there's still a lot of elements that, that correlate. I like that. It's getting the, getting the people better than you. Um, that truly is what kind of makes a great team. Yes. Um, having all those very skill sets, um, where, where one may be lacking in one skill set others provide. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of founders struggle with that because, you know, as a founder, it can, you can develop an ego very easily because you're, you're a founder and CEO, you're building something, you are creating something. And I think people get carried away with kind of the, um, I think like narcissistic tendencies that can come with that. Um, And so that's something that I really make sure that I check myself on. Um, I mean, on a weekly basis of like, is this my ego speaking or, you know, do I need to um, make a certain decision or go down a certain path or, you know, um, elevate a certain team member. So that's something that is really important to me. And I always connect with and collaborate and encourage other founders to, to be the same way. 
Do you have somebody that acts as your um, kind of sanity check or um, sounding board on a regular basis for your business? Yeah. So we do have several advisors that um, I check in with on a monthly basis and go to them whenever I need like an outside perspective or just advice. Um, And when we were going through this really big pivot, I had meetings with all of my advisors um, and they all have different experiences and backgrounds. And so, you know, they brought different perspectives and ideas to the table that really helped support us through that time. Um, And then I also have an incredible head of growth who came from the startup world. Um, She's really been my right hand person from pretty much from the very beginning. Um, and so she's someone that I go to a lot of like, Hey, can you check this for me? Or should we be doing this? Or, you know, she's someone that I can really let my guard down and be authentic and unapologetic with. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that it's so important to have that support system. Being a founder can feel really alone. You know, you feel really alone at times. And so, having people that you can trust and that you can just, again, let your guard down with is, um, is really helpful. That's great. Absolutely. It sounds very collaborative as well. Yeah, definitely. What is one thing that you want, um, your members to get out of her workplace or take away from their, their membership experience? Yeah. So this is a hard question because our ultimate vision is to create a more supportive and collaborative future amongst women and non-binary professionals. I think one thing that I really lacked in my career is unfortunately women, not every woman supports other women. Um, And I'm sure you've experienced this too, just being in a male dominated space and you see it more in those spaces because there's just a lack of women in general. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do think there really is a a huge issue of women not helping each other. And, and, uh, you know, I experienced that in my 12 plus years in commercial real estate. I had women that supported me and then I had women that went behind my back and like did not support me. And so, you know, our ultimate vision is to bring women together and encourage and elevate them and um, provide this environment where they want to support each other. And so that's what I want every single member to walk away with of being part of our community is just feeling more empowered to help and support other women while at the same time, of course, bringing away, you know, the resources and the mentorship and sponsorship and opportunities they need to elevate and grow in their career. That's great. It makes everybody want to sound, sound, uh, it makes everybody want to go out and join uh, her workplace and become members. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I think that the more women that come together that support each other, it's going to help break this overall barrier of just gender inequality in the workplace. And it just makes everyone have a better career experience. Um, And it's unfortunate that there are women out there that don't support other women because I think that they are really missing out on this opportunity. That's it's so true and so interesting. Um, so my one last question is, if you could go back in time, what advice would you give to your 20-year-old self? Oh, this is so good. Um, I would say to not worry. Um, when I was in my 20s, I was so focused on my career and like, oh my gosh, I have to work like 40 hour weeks and I have to get to this next level. And 
you know, what am I going to do about, you know, my personal life, like dating and getting married and, you know, I'm getting older and I just, I was worried all the time when I wish I would have just chilled out (laughs) because I'm in my mid thirties now. I still don't have it all figured out and that's okay. And I think your twenties really are a time to just enjoy life and like travel and try new restaurants and live in a fun city and expand your network. And, you know, of course you like, you know, most have to have a job and like, you want to have things kind of set up to put you on a good path of like career success. But I just would say overall, like, don't worry so much. Things could change at the drop of a hat. Again, like never thought I'd be an entrepreneur made that journey when I was in my early thirties and, you know, I didn't have everything figured out and that's okay. So that's the advice that I would give. That's great advice. Uh, So we end each episode with a rapid fire New York city minute question round Um, being that you spent most of You've spent most of your career in New York city. Uh, What is your favorite New York movie? Ooh, it's a hard one. Um, I would say Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, that's a good one. The old one or the newer one? Um, I like the the newer ones, like 15 years old. Yeah, I like the newer one. Um, Yeah, I would say that. What is your favorite way to get around New York City? I'm a subway girl. I'm just cheap. (laughs) <laughs> it's fast through most of the time anyway. I wish I could afford like taxis and Ubers, but yeah, I'm fine with the subway. It's easier to get around. It's quick. Yeah. And what's your favorite lunch spot? A lunch spot. A restaurant. Mm-hmm. I mean, overall restaurant, I lived in West Village at the beginning of my New York experience. I love La Artusi. Um, it's an Italian restaurant in the West village. It's incredible. Um, like I would go there for lunch or dinner. I'm a pasta girl. That sounds so good. I can relate to that as well. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us on this, uh, episode of the big apples core podcast. Um, if you're new to the podcast, um, we ask that you listen, like subscribe, um, And we'll join you again next time. Thank you so much, Courtney. Thank you.